But one of the first things that I did, actually the first thing that I did was sit with ayahuasca. And I said, I was just in this place where I knew that I needed some healing around these things. And I dabbled in plant medicine before, uh, some mushrooms and psychedelics and had some great experiences, but none of it was in a ceremonial context. Right. And so I went down and I found these practitioners who really resonated with me. They were mestizos. It was a mix of indigenous with the Spanish who came in. And so it's a mixture of traditional Amazonian wisdom with more of the Spanish Christian background. Um, but then they were also student, students of Buddhism, specifically uh, Tibetan Buddhism and Kashmiri Shaivism. And all of this just really resonated with me. And I was like, it's these guys. I sat for a ceremony. Nothing happened. I said, okay, that's slightly frustrating, but of course. no worries. Second ceremony, nothing happened. And I was like, I talked to the practitioner. I was like, hey, I'm pretty sure something's supposed to be happening. And I've had experiences, so I know what a change in my consciousness feels like a little bit. And he looks at me and he says, it's fine. You're going to pop. It's just working its way through. The medicine's working in the background, very calm about it all. And then we had a, a day where we had break from ceremony and drank some cacao, got a massage. And in the middle of my massage, all of the medicine starts hitting me. I'm like, oh, this is a lot. And I'm crying and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And the masseuse is there being like, there's a lot of energy around you right now. I said, I know. Thank you very much. Um, and then we went into the third ceremony. And in the third ceremony, I'm sitting there and I'm meditating and I've kind of got this visualization happening. And all of a sudden, this giant eagle swoops down, <laughs> grabs me out of my, what I thought was just me visualizing it. And we start flying higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and then pop. <laughs> And I had a really lovely experience, um, essentially watching consciousness play itself into creation. And while I was there and having this experience where it was like, yes, you have to dance to the beat of your own drum. And here's how you can navigate skillfully. There's this really heavy energy that came in and I recognized it as my dad. I can't tell you how, but I was like, it's my dad. And I was like, hey, you can hang out. Glad you're here but I've got to be over here dancing and doing my own thing, but just be there. Um, and it kept on getting heavier and heavier and heavier <laughs> until eventually I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't hold on to this. Hmm. And as soon as I got to that point, the entire right side of my body, which is the archetypical masculine side turned into tears and I just had tears running down my arms and my legs. And I'm sure that I was actually crying to some degree, but it was definitely just an energetic washing away. And then I got a little tap on my shoulder and it's the facilitator. And he says, Michael, you feeling the medicine? <laughs> and I was just like, yes, you doing okay? Can't speak for anybody else, but I'm doing wonderful. And it was this giant release and it piqued my curiosity. And so I changed my entire plan and I still studied natural building and got my yoga teacher certificate. Uh, but I attended as many plant medicine retreats as I could while I was in Guatemala. And then it was time for me to join the Peace Corps. And I went to Peru, <laughs> um, joined the Peace Corps, went down to Peru. And the very first thing that they tell me is we've changed the program. There's no longer going to be small business consulting. And I said, okay, that's what I was here for. But I've made a commitment to doing the Peace Corps and it's a two-year commitment and I'm solid on that. And then I get to my site after training and my mayor thinks I'm a spy for the CIA, legitimately thinks I'm a spy for the CIA. And so I can't well, you kind break of into one. I think, thank you. I, I can tell it's, it's the clean cut look. And he's like, so I can't get into the community because he thinks that I'm a spy for the CIA. The social development manager comes into the office drunk and rips up my visa documents. Oh, no. And I'm sitting around and I, I call Peace Corps and I'm like, hey, what am I supposed to do here? And they're like, we'll take care of it. And it just keeps on not 
coming together. And eventually they say, look, we can either change your site or you can, you can leave. And we totally understand. And so I quit. <laughs> I said, thank you very much. I'm going to move on. And as soon as I said that, Visa documents get signed again. Everything's coming down. It's like, no, really, everything's fine. You can stay. And I said, no, I, I, I'm leaving. Went home for about two weeks. My mom said, great, Michael, you have two master's degrees. What are you going to go do? And I said, I'm going back down to, the, to Peru and I'm going to go to the jungle and I'm going to study plant medicine full time. Uh, that did not go over well, but it's still what I did. And so I went to Peru, continued doing shamanic dietas and immersing myself in plant medicine studies. And then the teachers who I was studying with in Guatemala reached out to me and asked if I wanted to come and help with them and study with them full time, help them run their retreats and start learning under their wing. And that's what I did for four and a half, five years full time one or two retreats a month. I think it averaged out to somewhere around one or two ceremonies a week for four to five years. Um, it was a great, great training. And that was kind of how I got started in all this. That's a, that, that's a really amazing story. And I've, I've heard a couple of stories like this about ill-fated Peace Corps efforts. And so, There's a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, th there is, and it's it's a gigantic program that um, you know sometimes people have a bad experience with. But your experience with ayahuasca and getting more and more into the 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 work, the spiritual work of this, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing ayahuasca for the first time about a month and a half from right now, and I'm both excited and terrified. At this, I I walk in with no illusions about how serious this sort of thing is, and I'm I know that the practitioners that I'm going to be working with are people who are well trained and who are from the cor correct pedigree and so forth. It it's also something that I don't know. There's 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 a perception out there that sometimes ayahuasca can be taken a bit casually in the world. And can you talk about the transformative way that this changed your life and what it is supposed to be in the life of a person and, and how it is really supposed to help enhance who it is that you are, where you're going and, and, and your spiritual walk? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of questions in there. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say for me, it transformed my path by really helping me gain an understanding and awareness of the unseen world. And I mean that in terms of both the interior unseen part of myself, where I could go into my own emotions and feelings and learn how to navigate with them skillfully, but also the unseen world <laughs> externally. Uh, you know, and this is not woo-woo spirituality. This is there's energy. We know that we only see a certain frequency band of energy through our eyes. We know that, you know, animals like dogs or cats see differently than we do. We know that bats and other animals have these different ways of perceiving the world. And so in my view, ayahuasca is a non-specific amplifier. So it amplifies. It amplifies your ability to sense, see, feel, many, many things. And it amplifies your intention, which is why understanding to the best that you can or trusting the practitioners that somebody's sitting with is really important because you're going to a collective energetic space where you're very open. <laughs> you're trusting people to work on your energetic body. You don't always have an understanding of it. And so while your intentions are amplified and more accessible, so are theirs. And so there's this dynamic of finding the right practitioner. And it's not just a quick yes or no. It's, it's, it, there is a sense to it um, of, yeah, no, this feels correct for me. There's lots of different ways that ayahuasca can be used. Traditionally, ayahuasca is, was a diag diagnostic tool. And so the shaman would drink ay ayahuasca and then prescribe a dieta or some other form of action or practice to whoever the client was with 
the change and a bunch of Westerners for the most part coming in and drinking ayahuasca as well. It's a new ball game where everybody is drinking ayahuasca. That's a relatively recent change in the over 3000 year history of ayahuasca use on this earth. So there is a sense of casuality that can come in, you know, there's people who are like, let's drink ayahuasca and put on a soundtrack in our basement and just like listen and hang out. And that's the medicine, man. Um, okay. Something will happen, <laughs> but ayahuasca is really intelligent. Ayahuasca is both a substance, its own entity, <laughs> an amplifying effect where, where it is just you coming into contact with yourself. So it's, it's hard to explain in some ways, but the basics of it is that when you are well-trained and you are singing Icaros, uh, which are medicine songs, those Icaros carry medicine. And it's not just here's ayahuasca, the medicine that you've imbibed. It's the medicine of the Icaros, the medicine of the spirit, Base and everything that's being funneled in. And so when you just put on a playlist in a basement, the way that the medicine operates is very different than if you are sitting in a circle with trained facilitators who are singing Icaros and working with that medicine consciously and knowing how to keep things moving and clearing out and clearing out and clearing out. And so from my viewpoint, the best way to work with ayahuasca is through a lens of pura medicina, pure medicine, where it's healing, cleaning, connection with the divine. That's, that's the basics of it. Mm -hmm.